Get your free copy of the complete tutorial at www.teachucomp.com forward slash free. What we see here is the initial screen when you open the Photoshop application. If you're used to a typical Windows environment, you'll have some familiar tools available to you. Let's take a moment to acquaint ourselves with the various parts of the software environment and what we can do through those objects. At the top of the program window, we have what's called the menu bar, located right here. At the far right end of the menu bar, we have three buttons that allow us to control the size and shape of the application window. We have Minimize, Maximize and Restore, and of course the red X for Close. Now note that when you click those buttons, that it controls the sizing of the entire application, not just the image file upon which you happen to be working. So for example, if I click Minimize, it will minimize the entire Photoshop application. I can then go down into the taskbar, click the icon for Photoshop, and it will restore the application for me. If you're using version CS3 or earlier, and if you have the image window maximized, then it will also display the name of the image, its percent magnification, its layer name, and the color model, RGB, CMYK, etc. In versions CS5 and CS4, that information will display in the Image tab below the Options bar. You'll see that right here. The menu bar also contains the commands for performing tasks in Photoshop grouped by category. For example, the File command, located here, contains all of the necessary commands for file management. You can click on one of the commands, as I've just done in the menu bar, to display a drop-down listing of the subcommands that are available to perform. You can then click on the command that you want to perform. Some subcommands are followed by a right pointing arrow, like we see here for Open Recent. And that indicates that you must make a selection to execute that command. Those commands you simply hold your mouse pointer over until you see the side menu appear. Then slide your mouse pointer into the side menu to click on one of the available command choices. Some commands are followed by an ellipsis mark, such as open. Those commands will then launch a dialog box when clicked into, which you must input additional information or make a selection before you can execute that command. For example, if you selected File and then Open from the menu bar, you'll be presented with the Open dialog box that we see here, where you would need to find a file to open for editing. In these dialog boxes that do appear, you can click the Cancel button, located in the bottom right-hand corner, or press the Escape key on your keyboard to cancel the window without making a choice. We'll go ahead and cancel that for right now. If you're interested in simply becoming a faster user of the Photoshop program, then it will help you to memorize the keyboard shortcuts that are available for the various commands in the menu bar. Using the menu bar to begin also will allow you to view the various keyboard shortcuts. Keyboard shortcuts are listed to the right of the various commands in the menu bar dropdown. For example, if I wanted to view the open dialog box again, I could press the Control key and then tap the O key on my keyboard to make it appear more quickly in the future. Control and O, and we see that open. We'll go ahead and click Cancel. Now you can see the keyboard shortcut Control plus O to the right of the Open command in the File menu bar commands drop down menu. Let's look at that File, and you see that right to the right of Open right there. Now, if you want to use the keyboard to select a command that doesn't have its own keyboard shortcut listed, you still can. Let's click out of here. If you hold down the Alt key on your keyboard, you should notice a small underline appear underneath one letter in each menu bar command. Press the key on your keyboard that corresponds to the underlying letter of the command from which you want to access a subcommand to view its drop-down menu. So, for example, here I can press F for file. You will see that each subcommand, with a few exceptions, has an underlined letter. You can then just strike the underlined letter to execute that command. Note that some of the commands under the filter command, let's look at that here under filter, don't have underlined letters. 
In that case, you can just press the first letter of the command. If there is more than one command that starts with the same letter in the menu dropdown, just keep pressing the letter to cycle between all of the commands that start with that letter until the one you want is selected. Then you just press enter on your keyboard to execute that command. Now in version CS4, Photoshop introduced the application bar. And this toolbar stores often used tools, such as a link to Adobe Bridge, which we'll cover in the next chapter, view extras, zoom, and more. You'll see that right here. At the far right end of the menu bar is the workspaces menu. That's located over here. And here you can modify your workspace, which we cover in the upcoming lessons. You simply click on a workspace you want to use, or the double pointing right arrows to use the drop down and select a different workspace or option you want. These workspaces are all consolidated in a drop down in CS4 and previous versions. Now below the menu bar is what's called the options bar. That's located right here. And here you can set the options for the tools that you select to use from the toolbox. As a result, this toolbar is constantly changing, showing different buttons and settings depending on what tool is selected. So, as we learn how to use the tools, you check here to set additional options for the selected tools. You can turn the options bar on and off if you wish by selecting Window and then Options from the menu bar. So we would go down here select options, you'll see it close. And we can turn it back on the same way. Now that will toggle the option bars display on or off as we just saw. Now below the options bar you have the main workspace of the Photoshop program right down here. And the various images that you have open and create will display themselves here in their own window. You can also use the various toolbars and panels to edit the images. Now the main tool that we have to select image editing tools is called the toolbox. That's located on the left side here by default. Now this is a floating toolbar that hovers over the workspace at the left. You can use it to select the tools that assist you in selecting and editing your images. You can click on a toolbox button to activate the selected tool just give it a click. You'll see again when you do that that the options bar up here is constantly changing. Some of the buttons also have small triangles in their lower right corners that you can click to show other available settings for that button in a side menu. So you can give that a click and you'll see the other tools that share a space there. You can then click on one of those other button settings to select that as the default choice for the button in the future if you wish, like that. You can also display the other settings for a button by simply right clicking on a button as well. You can also hold down your mouse pointer over any one of the buttons to view its name in a screen tip. So if you forget what those buttons are, just hold your mouse pointer over it as we see the red eye tool there pattern stamp tool and so forth. And that's that small yellow box that appears. Now note that it will also show the keyboard shortcut key that you can also press to select the toolbox buttons. You simply hold down the shift key on your keyboard while pressing one of those keyboard shortcuts and you'll switch to that tool. Tap those same keys again and you'll switch to the next tool that shares that same space. If you want to move the toolbox, then place your mouse pointer over the small title bar at the top of the toolbox, right here up at the top, and then just click and drag it anywhere you wish in the application. Now you may have to do this quite a bit as you're working with your images. Now you can also expand and collapse the toolbox by clicking the double pointing arrows at the top, right here. Now this can come in handy when you're working in different workspaces. 
Now if you want, you can also turn the toolbox on and off by selecting Window and Tools from the menu bar, Window, and then go down, and then select Tools if you wish to turn this on or off, and it would turn it off, and turn it back on. And again, that will toggle the toolbar's display on and off if you wish. Like what you see? Pick up your free copy of the complete tutorial at www.teachucomp.com forward slash free.